Hello Ways, this is Retro TK2 and today we're back making our Pokemon ROM hack. Last time, if you remember, we used VBA SDLH to do some trace logging in our Pokemon game. Yes, we did it. So remember, we went through, we created our breakpoints and we also got out this wonderful trace log of all of our assembly language. Now, in this episode, I want to go into what assembly language is. And I think the best way to do that is to check out some of the tutorials on it. So let's go in and type in ASM tutorial. And these are a couple of the tutorials that I've checked out. It's really strangely enough it seems that there aren't that many tutorials like tutorial videos on well certainly asm programming with the gba pokemon a lot of the stuff is just i say it's just i mean the actual resources are brilliant but they most of them are forum posts like this from shiny quasar 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 it's quasar isn't it i can't remember and i think quasar is a pokemon himself so yeah I know, I'm a fan of Pokemon as well, Ace. I must admit, it stops after 151 for me, but yeah. <laughs> anyway, anyway, let's get into this. So, okay, like, I, I kind of want to use his tutorial, but I don't necessarily want to completely take away. Please, Ace, do go on and check out all of these tutorials that we are going to go over. This Pokey community is brilliant, and a lot of the stuff that these guys do, I couldn't, I wouldn't be anywhere near as well informed even though i'm not necessarily the most informed on this stuff i wouldn't be anywhere near as well informed without these guys so please do go on there read this stuff and give them your support so what we'll need is the visual boy okay let's have a little look at this let's dissect this okay so introduction if you've ever had to learn about computers many people say the computer's using nuts and ones this is binary is yes, that he is talking about and yeah the machine code is usually written in C and C++. It's usually written in C and then gets compiled down to machine code, which is then compiled to, well, sorry, no, it's usually written in C++, which is then compiled down to assembly code, and then it's converted into knots and ones. Okay, so assembly, ASM, or assembly language, is a low-level language. Low-level language, yes, and it has a one-to-one -one relationship with machine code. I can't see that in this tutorial here. So for this tutorial, what we're going to need is Visual Boy Advance. And whenever I say one-to-one -one relationship, yes, I mean that one line of assembly will correspond to one, I want to say line in machine code, but it's not quite like that surface level is surface level you need a compiler to put the smr into vba sdlh which we've already got for testing the debugging and a brain brilliant i will actually admit that the a lot of the tutorials that i've seen the guys have a very good sense of humor now i say good because it sort of follows my sense of humor is but <laughs> you may <laughs> you may have a, a differing opinion on that okay this one goes into a little bit more than I wanted to. I wanted a little bit more surface level stuff. So I'm going to go into here and hopefully I'm looking for a very specific one, one that I find very good. Yes, from Karate Kid 552. This tutorial is perfect for starters, yes, because it really goes into spelling out exactly what ASMR is. So okay, so to start off with, uh, it's not an ASMR tutorial. He goes into saying that he won't actually talk about, you know, what LDR means, what sub means, all that sort of fun stuff. He's just doing a sort of shallow, good beginner tutorial on ASM. I actually think I just called it ASMR. There he is. <sighs> Brilliant. Anyway, ASM stands for assembly, which is a computer language that operates uh, directly on the CPU. And... Yeah, by now people understand that computers operate on binary numbers, not some ones, and it's impossible for a human to understand. Not necessarily true. You can actually understand it. It's just very difficult. But uh, I don't know. I'd say assembly is definitely easier to understand than binary, but uh, no, it's still tough. So early programmers came up with a way to re read machine code. That was what assembly language is. And then, as I said before, yes, it is a language uh, understandable by humans that has a one-to-one -one relationship to binary code that the computer uses. So anything you do in the assembly will be converted to binary and will have, you know, it won't be running several different uh, instructions. It will just be one, running the one instruction, be it subtracting certain numbers from a certain number or something like that. And 
Each and every CPU has an assembly set associated with it. Many CPUs uh, also have unique assembly sets. I believe actually this is something to do with the PlayStation 3. The reason why PlayStation 4 games can't play PlayStation 3 is because the actual processors were completely different. Could be completely wrong on that one, Ace. But so in order for them to actually, in order for you to actually play your PlayStation 3 games onto the PS4, they would have to create an entire emulator that would emulate the playstation 3 games and that would be a ton of processing power required for that and if you've ever tried to play i believe it's the dolphin emulator for the gamecube you'll know exactly what i'm talking about is unless you've got a pretty high-end computer it's it's not going to happen for you but well actually the dolphin emulator anyway hey <laughs> we're getting off topic who cares I mean that assembly written for yeah assembly is written for one processor and it will not run on another so essentially yeah which is a bit of shit this led to the higher development of higher level languages such as c c sharp c plus plus bloody blah take your pick java you know python <laughs> you know all of this other stuff is any sort of other coding language when referring to the dbi processor itself it can run in two modes arm and thumb i mentioned this I believe maybe this episode or last episode or the episode before. And so for the most part, thumb is used 99% of the time. And the thumb is used 99% of the time because it is about half the size and just executes quicker. And for almost every instruction of ARM, there is a corresponding thumb instruction. So most of the time you're all going to be using the thumb representation of it, which is good for us, I guess. Everything in GBA games runs off of predetermined ASM routines, all scripting commands, fun stuff like that. Not necessarily that important. The registers are interesting. So because there's 16 registers and every single piece of data used by the game has to pass through one of these registers. So if I go back into our stack trace, which is here and edit with notepad, you'll see that these have R00 all the way up to R15. These are our 16 registries ace. And each and every piece of data that goes into here corresponds to something that these instructions will use. Now, if you remember, we used this, hopefully if I can check it out now in our previous stack trace and type in our, I believe dollar two no, zero two zero three should get us there. Yep, perfect. Nope. 030994. Hey, hey, there she is. There he is. No, no, 996. Sorry, four is the Safari balls, if I believe. Which they are. Okay, so here we go. Here we go. So this is our R0, and this is our associated. So as you can see, I believe in the last video, one of the registries had it going into R0, and now it's going into R1. And there it is down there <laughs> in R0. So basically asm will you'll toss these things around constantly yes and they will be put into different registries and then popped off of them and pushed into them so this push and the pop 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 any pop nope don't believe that we've got any pop going on here so you can push and pop your registries there you are yes there's pop going on there and yeah we'll get into what that means pretty soon hopefully so 16 registries and each and every piece of data will go pass through them so the registries zero to seven are general purpose registries can be used for anything and that's probably the main reason why they were being used to store our uh, values for the actual safari zone registries eight to twelve are also general purpose but are mostly used for scripting variables so our scripts are sort of going to be associated with these registries mostly which i suppose if we go back into here these are consistent not necessarily. Okay, zero, 08 is usually our addresses associated with scripting. So as you can sort of see, zero, 08, zero, 08, zero, 08 is usually in the more upper end brackets. Although I must admit they are in R14 and R15, which we'll get into now. Okay, so the registry 13 is the stack pointer. The registry 14 is the link register and the stack registry 15 is the program counter what does all of that mean is please read this uh, tutorial because i gotta be honest with you i'm not 100 sure myself <laughs> i'm just kidding i kind of understand it okay so r14 is used as a link registry uh, link registry in many instructional set architectures such as blah is a special purpose registry which holds the address to return to when a function call completes so once we get to the end of this function, we will go back to the last 
function, I believe here, which should hopefully be where this has come from. Again, as I don't know whether that's correct. No, no, it's number 14. So sorry, this is where we're going to go back to. Maybe, sure. <laughs> you can see why I stick with the higher level stuff is this low level stuff really is. Yeah, it, it doesn't work for me anyway. Registry 15 is the program counter. Uh, what the program counter does is point to the next instruction to be executed. After that instruction is run, it is incremented to point to the next instruction. Registries are small memory slots, uh, each one being 32 bits, or in other words, four bytes. So a byte is, is six, or not six, eight bits long. And a lot of things are broken into bytes. So you've got megabytes, kilobytes, and all that fun stuff. Well, that's kind of what they're talking about. One byte is eight bits. So that's all. Some programming genius way back in the past decided to name these memory slots the processor uses as registries. Since this tutorial is all about understanding, everybody has a different many viewpoints. I don't know, yes, who cares? Okay, so pushing and popping. This is what I was sort of talking about earlier. Uh, I started earlier, and then I wasn't going to explain what pushing and popping registers are, and he won't, go blah, blah, blah. Basically, there is this thing called a stack. Let's go into here. So basically, you've got this stack. This is what our registry is like. So registries are like variables that store temporary values and information. Uh, registries are 32 bits long, as we have said, or four bytes, uh, making the highest possible value FFFFF, since it's hexadecimal, uh, you know, F recurring for eight is. The stack is a bit hard to explain. I don't understand why people struggle with stack. Maybe it's because I come from a programming background myself. Basically, the way they think of it is, think of it, it's like 15 stacks of china plates. So, you know that you've got plates is in your home, hopefully. You're lucky enough to have plates. You usually stack them on top of each other. Well, the way it works is that whenever you stack one, you don't usually lift up the entire stack and put it at the bottom. You usually just put it on the top. When you push a registry into the stack, it's like adding a new plate. So, it puts it on there. But then you can pop it to get access to the one that was previous to it. And it's really as simple as that is. So, you pop it in and then push it off. That's really about as quick, as easy as you go. So whenever one of these, look at this one, I believe, actually we'll look at whenever it gets popped. That would probably be a better idea. So if we look at our zero is popped here, you'll see that it pops and then it goes straight into the one underneath. Okay, likewise, four and five, I believe, are popped and then it'll go to the one that was previous in it. And then there's a whole stack trace thing that can go on with a two, yes, I believe. I don't really want to get too bogged down into what pushing and popping are, but that's essentially it in a nutshell, yes, and it'll certainly do for now. If I need to go into super more detail about it, I definitely will. Correlation between LR and PC, I don't necessarily care too much about that. Basically, yes, what this says is that ASM is extremely difficult to understand. And it's certainly not something you want to spend an awful lot of time on. And it's definitely not something I want to be in the majority of this series. So what I want to do instead is this. I want to go into ASM. Is it resources? I believe it is. Resources. Hopefully we've already, oh, for goodness sakes, Pokemon GBA. And this, I believe, is what we want to use is. So this is the ASM resource thread. Please go on to this. It is unbelievably brilliant. And in here we have a ton, and I do mean a ton, of assembly, pre-made pre assembly languages, assembly routines that we can use. And it has been created, I believe, no, he's not mentioned here. It'll be mentioned on one of these, definitely. Um, sorry, actually, Esperance is a legend for creating this thread. Certainly, this has been an absolute fountain of knowledge for me. Yes, and uh, I kind of want to, I kind of want to look at the ones that are going to really pertain to us. Anyways, yes, I've spent ages doing this here. Use the playtime as a clock. No, where is? Let's have a look at steps. Step. 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 Okay, lose HP, regenerate HP with every step. Yes. What does that sound like to you? To me, it sounds like being able to use some sort of event for the step and being able to take away money to do with certain other things. So now FBI is an absolute legend, it would appear, on whenever it comes to a lot of this stuff. A lot of the scripts here have been written by him. 
and we are probably going to go in and take quite a number of these but look at this is so we can actually use this code here and then we can call it from our other scripts in here using i believe it's called call asm call asm there it is there perfect so we can actually call asm link it into here and this will do all of the stuff <laughs> that we don't want to do and it will do it in a nicer way for us i must admit there's a lot of this stuff that i'm not sure about i believe at is used as a as their comment series I'm not entirely sure if that's true or not but hopefully this is all going to work so next episode yes sorry uh, to wind this down and this episode down next episode we are going to try and get one of these scripts working inside our rom and if we can do that is yes, we are going to be flying it will be brilliant because then it can mean that i'll be able to use these scripts and pretty much base our entire game around these so you can see where we are going but for now yes hopefully that's been a pretty i mean that has been a <laughs> a fairly quick very rough around the edges uh way of explaining what asm is but hopefully you're a little bit more informed about it so yeah rate comment and subscribe yes i hope you're enjoying this series i know i'm certainly enjoying getting well and truly stuck into this am asm tutorials you can email me at retrotk2 at gmail.com with anything you like yes please any tutorials on this would be great. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you in the next video.